In the dusty open country of the northern Transvaal, Masilo Machetti is in his fields by sunrise to avoid the searing heat of the midday sun. 300 miles south of Masillo's fields are the mines of Itvatersrand. An elevator has lowered chief foreman Chris Fonnikek and his team 10,000 feet below ground. They will spend four hours drilling down here before returning to the surface. Further south in the Cape province, we will find rancher David Kingwell. Today, he and his family will round up the sheep for shearing and dipping. Isaac Marosha has earth to move on a construction site near Johannesburg, the industrial heartland of the country. A new day has dawned in South Africa. For many foreigners, the typical South African is the white Africana rancher or farmer, as tough and unyielding as the land. But how accurate is that image? Who is the typical South African? A white, a black, a farmer, a city dweller? There are no easy answers. So if we want to know South Africa, the real South Africa, where do we begin? South Africa is a country of great beauty and profound isolation. The extent of the country seems limitless. There are brightly colored vineyards, patchy scrublands, sun-baked deserts, and wide open spaces bounded by majestic mountain chains and rivers. But South Africa is also a country of foundries, steelworks, cooling towers, large-scale agricultural and irrigation projects, tourist resorts, harbors serving international ships, cities, and more cities. As the country reveals itself, the visitor begins to realize that South Africa is both the old and new Africa. It's a developing country, much like any other in Africa, Asia, or Latin America, but it's also a highly urbanized and industrialized country like the United States. On a typical day in South Africa, the visitor will see familiar sights. Secretaries, salespeople, business people, miners, school children. But the visitor will also discover linguistic, cultural, and religious differences. Along the streets, several different languages will be spoken. There will be opportunities to buy from a fascinating array of market stalls, perhaps even a chance to visit the churches of several different faiths. There are many faces in the crowd. But until we put a name to some of the faces, until we know what they do, what they hope, how much can we know about South Africa and South Africans?